What if your phone, your laptop, and even your life depended on one country's natural resources? Rare earth elements are a key component in everything, from submarines and fighter jets to washing machines and flat screen televisions. But now China, which produces most of the world's supply of rare earths, is limiting such exports. The ability to harness and use rare earths also turns on the economic, the industrial, and the manufacturing prowess of the individual state. They're going to find themselves increasingly uh, at the mercy of countries that are rare earths rich. So, what exactly are rare earths, and why have they become the next geopolitical flashpoint? Rare earths refer to 17 metallic elements, scandium, yttrium, and 15 types of lanthanides. Despite their name, the minerals are not exactly rare, but extracting them from the ground is complex, costly, and has a negative environmental impact. For decades, China has invested heavily in every step of the process, from mining to refining. Today, Chinese companies dominate the rare earths industry. It's because it has a very comprehensive supply chain. There is um, the backup of the government um, in terms of like sourcing the minerals. So it's a very comprehensive network in China. In China, labor costs are cheap. And although environmental standards have, problem, have risen, they may not be as rigorous as in, in many Western countries. The refining and the processing of rare earths, and that is where China has an even more decisive advantage, uh, coming to around 90% or controlling 90% of global refinement facilities and output, so to speak. China also dominates rare earths production. It controls 69% of global mine production, far exceeding any other individual country. So, how did China achieve its dominance in the sector? Its unique investment structures and its mobilization of resources and capability to do so uh, through very, very short times and amass vast waves of resources to be deployed towards this goal, that's how China has managed to you know, gain a serious foothold in the uh, rare earths market in the first place. As China has grown to dominate the rare earths industry, the U.S. has fallen behind. And as relations between the two superpowers have worsened, these vital minerals have become another political battleground. Beijing imposed export controls on some rare earths in July 2023. The restricted list has grown since then. These have impacted nearly 80% of U.S. Department of Defense weapon systems, including its fighter jets, ships and submarines, predator drones, missiles, bombs, and advanced radar systems, according to defense analyst firm Govini. Currently, only one location in the U.S., California's Mountain Pass Mine, is extracting rare earth minerals. The military kind of purpose um, products, I think this is the part that Beijing is um, really trying to be um, cautious and be aware of. In many cases, rare earths are more than just vital. For many modern weapon systems, they are irreplaceable. Gallium, for example, is used for radar systems. But 98.68% of the world's gallium is produced in China. With rare earths becoming a key point of contention in the US-China rivalry, companies around the world are trying to cut their reliance on Chinese supplies. But the shift is easier said than done that we have in the uh, European community is a very strong shortage. And so we do not have the availability uh, with respect to the, to the needful in order to produce the manufacture, to produce and manufacture the device that are composed of these rare, rare, rare earth. Analysts say diversifying supplies away from China remains a challenge for many companies and nations. Governments have relaxed legislation on rare earths mining, and companies have organized investment schemes that aim to expand the extraction industry outside China's borders. Yet, as nations attempt to move further away from China, Chinese suppliers control the market, and therefore, the price. If somebody starts producing more, then China can start selling more, the price goes down, and so any commercial enterprise has to stop operating. This is China's trump card. Any and all usage of this card would only galvanize domestic support in America in pushing towards self-sufficiency in rare earths. But for now, the U.S. does not have enough capacity to process the rare earths it needs. The industry relies on extraction techniques that have negative environmental impacts and would raise concern in the U.S. 
There's also a lack of vocational training needed to prepare employees to work in the sector. You've got to make sure that it's economic to mine them. You've got to um, go out and, and find the money to then build the mine. Um, you've got to train all the, the laborers and workers and do all of the processing. That can take at least 10 years, if not longer. But the U.S. and China are not the only countries with rare earth deposits. Most of the world's rare earth reserves can be found in developing countries. They just don't have the resources um, to do the mining and exploration. That hasn't stopped the U.S. and partner nations from searching for alternative sources of rare earths. It's reportedly among the reasons U.S. President Donald Trump is so obsessed with buying Greenland. I think Greenland will be uh, worked out with us. I think we're going to have it. It's also why large-scale operations are ramping up in countries like Brazil and Malaysia. Ukraine's rare earths resources were also a key part of a recent defense deal between Washington and Kiev. As they come to realize that not only may China not be depended upon for a steady and continued supply of rare earths, but that the same could also be said of China's supply of other critical strategic goods. And thus, that is where these other countries and blocs push for self-sufficiency would also kick in. Chinese officials have announced that the Commerce Ministry would resume authorizing new export licenses for rare earths as part of Beijing's negotiations with Washington. But simultaneously, it seems like they're also trying to kind of find a middle ground to strike a balance. Because so many companies like um, in the U.S. or maybe in Europe, they just kind of um, complain. Uh, Europe is, is trying to be nicer to the Chinese, and so European companies, as I understand, are, are getting their rare earths faster than American companies. Is there a way out? Some companies say that the diversification push is not worth it, considering challenges such as time, cost, and human capital. Not only do they take time physically to open new mines and get them up and running to full capacity, but you've got the pole permitting process, which includes you know, local communities, indigenous people, environmental controls, and uh, maybe some technological issues. What's worth noting here is that ultimately we need more supply chain consolidation and synergy across regional blocks. China will not lose its dominance in the rare earth space for the next four to five years. But a question, of course, is to whom can they turn? Few nations have proposed effective strategies to break Beijing's grip on the rare earths industry, according to experts. The government um, will need to basically work around regulations because there is like a lot of pollution um, and it could be unprofitable um, if um, the mining process is not successful. It's very difficult in a way outside China to operate Commercially, this is going to be a long-term struggle. It'll need sustained government support. Otherwise, uh, China's low costs will just underpin, uh, uh, undermine any, any Western efforts. So for now, rare earths will remain rare everywhere. That is, except in China.